First of all, thanks for the invitation uh, to be here. It has been a, a, a very, very interesting uh, day for me. Uh, I, I will just, uh, uh, as Ellen uh, just indicated, provide some uh, very uh, instinctive reactions to Martin's presentation. So <laughs> it was my uh, personal impressions of things that uh, uh, I was uh, had the opportunity to 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 think about based on uh, the, the 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 presentation that he shared with me earlier. So a lot of things that I'm going to be saying have been said before. So this, uh, of course, having this uh, needed overlapping is a good thing, but for the audience probably <laughs> it's too boring. But uh, the idea for whom, it, it's, uh, again, seems to be very, very important. So we have to, in and, and it's not quite clear whether we actually know who those uh, are who have received what. So uh, uh, the other issue is about the outcomes, and there's a whole uh, presentations about outcomes, what outcomes should be uh, have it to, to be measuring. Um, and there's a, uh, something that was part of Martin's also presentation. So, of course, the question of evidence. First, we have uh, sound evidence that demonstrate that whatever is uh, cost reduction. But at the same time, is this the objective? Or, uh, and I, I thought that it's also Martin's presentation, which is the context. Context is so important. So uh, given that we are talking about, of course, problems, but facing different healthcare systems with different healthcare costs. Just this simple thing that reduce costs, of course, in some uh, jurisdictions, is extraordinarily relevant. In other, it's even dangerous. So you have to be very, very careful about that. So the, another idea is about uh, risk stratification, health information systems. Of course, you said that uh, system for risk adjustments or whatever, of course, are there. And they have, uh, but in my opinion, they are not just uh, poorly methodological elements that limit the value. It's that most of them are based on structured data, on coded diagnosis. And a lot of things that were here in, in this session uh, are indicating the necessity of capturing very different elements that are in the medical record, but in the notes of the medical record, probably not in the codes that you have to submit to get paid, or that we have to submit to get uh, the statistics of what we are doing in our primary care centers. So it, it, it's, it's there, it's all those clinical judgments, all the values of the conversation with patients, all the trust that uh, is present or not present, it has such a powerful um, influence in everything. But it's not, it's there, but we are not able to capture things. And again, the problem of developing performance, measuring for specific condition, which we have to say that we have been for 25 years trying to pursue this idea of evidence-based medicine based on uh, averages. <laughs> now we are saying that does not work. So and then the question is, so we were successful for 25 years after that. So we have to capture the provider's attention, and they are providing care based on averages. And now we are saying, no, you have to personalize care, which is a paradigm shift, as uh, Chema was uh, uh, also mentioning. So integrated care, coordinate, of course, yes, but uh, complexity in, in, in very limited time. So again, uh, we have to deal with uh, complexity situations in complex situations, uh, which is as the clinical encounter is, but always in a very limited time. So mm, then whose priorities? Uh, right now, of course, more and more we recognize the issue of patient preferences, patient value. But it, it, that's really probably somehow there in the relationship, but not really driving all the medical care. So, the issue here is something, the patient journey, which start, as you said, 
not when you have 65 years old, you are retired, you get your Medicare card. <laughs> no, it's just when you are 45, and then everything with your biological components, your functional situation, your environmental expression, your socioeconomic position, and how all these things are affecting how you are developing your own biology. And also, to some extent, how much the natural history of medical condition have been transformed completely through our exposure to healthcare systems. So probably what we learned from a uh, medical text 25 mm -hmm. years is completely different now because of the beneficial, to some extent, uh, influence of medical care. So th this patient journey means different things that, uh, of course, uh, we should develop new models of care, of course, for this, but based on the problems that we are facing, which are from the genetic endowment through the overall structure of the health policy environment. So uh, now I'm going to be showing a couple of uh, personal work that we have been involved. And this is part of a European project in which, which compare um, how patients with certain chronic conditions were uh, treated and compare that against clinical recommendations. So uh, we developed the idea of a composite indicator, which is an aggregate indicator that captures everything that patients have to be receiving, trying to obtain a, one single measure, say from zero to 100, in order to, to measure quality of care. Uh, and we include everything that those patients are receiving and what we observe is that the higher condition you have, the higher of you were in the score of uh, quality of medical care. So doctors, uh, primary care physicians, actually are doing what it, we, I expect from them to be doing. So <laughs> you say you have to follow clinical guidelines recommendations, we follow them. You have diabetes, we follow that. You have COPD, we follow that. We, you have different things. We have a guideline, we have recommendation. This is what we should be doing. And then, this is a completely different study. We did, this is in, in a court study in the city of Madrid. And we evaluated uh, the incidence of diabetes and we this is a six-year uh, cohort study, and what we found is that uh, discordant comorbidity is uh, related with an increased incidence of diabetes in patients at risk of developing diabetes. We selected patients what we could call this pre-diabetes. So patients that primary care physicians knew that they were at risk, and knew that they were at risk, and knew that the evidence said that for this patient, you have to educate them and they have to lose weight, they have to exercise, uh, everything that should be there. But what happened is that probably, and this is one of the problems that we don't know because the structure uh, coded information in our medical records allow us to have this data but not to understand what has happened. It's that an interpretation is that you dedicate more time to specific following of this specific recommendation of all those conditions mm -hmm. and don't have time then to dedicate to educate patients and to talk to patients. Uh, this is a clinical trial which is being conducted by a group of uh, colleagues from, from Spain in which uh, also are participating different uh, European countries. This is a clinical trial which is aimed towards uh, reducing polypharmacy, which is to some extent and should say a surrogate outcome of this complex world of, uh, of uh, uh, multimorbidity through something which is there, which is the professional training. So this is through a system of learning where providers are participating and trying to identify how they could approach the issue of polypharmacy in those complex patients and measuring, of course, the reduction of medicines, but also 
uh, the quality of life of patients as, a, as an outcome. I end up providing a few slides about CRODIS Plus. Uh, no. Oh, here. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, CRODIS Plus is a European joint action. It's a large European project on chronic conditions. And in this uh, project, we are going to be testing the comorbidity uh, model, the comorbidity model, which was developed in joint action CRODIS. Joint action CRODIS was the first phase of the project. And the comorbidity uh, model is addressing five dimensions with 16 specific characteristics. And during this uh, second phase of the project, uh, we will be, in fact you, <laughs> some of the people who are here in the hall are we working in very specific context. So uh, in Spain there are just two, Andalusia and Aragon, which are be very much based on our primary care system. In Lithuania, two centers in also in Italy. So and based on that, we expect to develop uh, the local adaptation of this a uh, structural mechanism to uh, provide uh, an alternative to uh, multimorbid patients. So, contextual issues have a lot of influence in different issues that I was uh, already mentioning, and I'm finishing. So, my personal recommendation will be, we are at the 50 years uh, anniversary of the ALMATA declaration, most of what primary care is, can do for this patient is something that has to be, uh, of course, extended and consolidated. Of course, there are many other things, but at least and contextually, from my own perspective and very much based on my country, I would say that primary care has to be uh, the right place. Uh, another issue that is this is the inequity by disease by problem. So we should try to avoid that being a multimorbid patient could be an advantage for you. Because then you could receive better care or more organized care or coordinated or integrated that if you don't meet this criteria of being a multimorbid patient. So this is something that is difficult to define, but it's, it's, it's there. And Again, for me, how to measure through uh, the, the, the impact of what you are doing is very difficult, but I guess that for me personally, uh, elements of functional status have to be to some extent part of the uh, outcomes evaluation of what we should be doing with multimorbid patients. So thank you much for the invitation.